dangle a fish in front of a shark and use them to take a bite. Yeah, I had a question about the private contractor mercenaries too. Um, my, like I read something by Naomi Klein, who's kind of like a, a lefty type, um, that she said somewhere, I don't know if it's true anymore, but she said at a certain point there was more private security than military in Iraq. And then, but like, you know, U.S. military specifically from, uh, from the government. And then I've talked to other people, um, like my sister's a, a Marine uh, officer, she's in Japan, she's obviously, she's never been involved in any actual fighting, but she's really pro-war. Um, and she was telling me that, like, people like Blackwater, there's very few of them, and they only protect very important people, and that's it. So I'm just trying to figure out, like, what's, is there bias, or what's the truth, or what did it, did there used to be a lot more contractors than there are now? Um, you know, uh, as far as the private security, yes, that's true. There's, there are very few. There, relatively, there are very few, uh, and they do protect the, the really important people. Uh, in terms of not security, but in terms of contractors, you have to count everybody, which means you have to count the third country nationals, the people they call in from India and Bangladesh and all of that. But those are all technically contractors. So when you count all of those people as contractors, the answer is yes. We have we're hiring more people in contracting. Then there are soldiers over there. So the answer is kind of both. And all really quick, you know, it's funny. What's that saying about the preparedness of our military when they use private contractors to protect our own generals? It's not like they use American special forces or you know the 82nd or 25th ID. They go to Blackwater. That's actually, that, I, I want to. I, I, am, I don't, want, don't want to interrupt. He's right. No, 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 no. He's absolutely right. I mean, uh, the generals, keep in mind these are four star generals, etc., are protected by private security, not by their own troops. Now, that's an outrageous enough, but I've got to tell you this story. And you're, and in civil affairs, we have a little saying you can't make this shit up. <laughs> and because it's, all, it's outlandish, you know, nobody would believe this, right? Well, one day, I, was, uh, I got up early, and because I worked at the State Department, I had internet in my room. Uh, and uh, I would get up early and I would read the newspaper, and it happened that there was a story in the paper that Donald Rumsfeld was in Iraq, and he had gone to, and this is after he had uh, been fired, but he was still Secretary of Defense, and so he was kind of doing his victory lap around Iraq. And so he was in Baghdad, and they had the transcript of his speech, his prepared remarks, uh, in the paper. So I read those and moved on to another, uh, to another thing. And he... Uh, but then I got into the office, because keep in mind I was a FOBIT. A FOBIT is a person who never leaves the FOB or forward operating base, so I just lived, you know, I never, I didn't go out on missions. Uh, and I just did paperwork. And so I got in my office, and we got this order, okay, everybody needs to go over to the MWR, that's the Morale, Welfare, and Recreation uh, building, because uh, we're going to have a, a special guest. Well, I started thinking, well, who could this special guest possibly be? Well, it turned out to be Donald Rumsfeld. The outrageous thing is, is we had about two or three hundred people from the from the post that, that went, the soldiers that went in to, to listen to his little speech. Before we could go in, we had to be disarmed. <laughs> yes. they, they had MPs out there with the wands. And we had to pull out our dog tags. It was dog tags that was setting them off. You could have no knives, no guns. Three hundred soldiers in the middle of a war zone have to be disarmed because the Secretary of Defense doesn't trust his own military. Wow. You, can't make that that you can't make this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> That's no lie. That's no lie. So. Just that you know, this is one of those little dimensions of absurdity that you need to be aware of because this war is being fought in your name. The soldiers over there are fighting for you even though they're being misused. And it's, it's your responsibility to stop this. Well, uh, <coughs> I've seen, uh, did you, I've seen figures that oh, 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 he had a question. Oh, <laughs> that there's, there's 180,000, 186,000 uh, private contract people in Iraq right now. 140,000, 138,000 U.S. troops, 186,000 contracted mercenaries right now. Well, not all contractors are mercenaries, or they're all they're all fighters. Because you got you got the, uh, the the Filipinos that basically clean the latrines, 
uh, and, and those guys are completely mis, mis uh, they're completely abused. They pay like three thousand bucks for a job. They come over, they have to work seven days a week. They don't get any time off. Uh, they have they they have to pay back. They have to pay for their rent. They have to pay for their food and all of that. And they have to pay for the flight and out. They go there with like a four thousand dollar debt on their head. They earn so much a month. And most of it is actually going to pay for their living expenses while they're there doing the job. So I mean, they're they're indentured servants, right? They can't get out. I mean, and this is all being done in your name. Keep in mind, the money that they are being paid is coming from you. And of course, it's all of course you know, Cisco, Circa, Circa is the company. There you go. Circa is the company that that hires these third country nationals, and Circa brings them in. Uh, abuses them like you wouldn't believe, and 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 they're they're getting contract prices as if these were close to Americans. I mean, you know, they're they're getting probably forty thousand dollars a person for these guys, and they're paying the people, and the, the people have to pay them three thousand dollars to get the job, and then they're getting about forty thousand bucks a person for the work, but they're only paying them like four hundred dollars a month out. And it's also it's typically, and the way that they typically run it. Is like uh, with our mess hall, they have maybe one or two or three American uh, managers who manage the clean ship and everything, and the rest of the workers are, let's say, uh, Fijians, Filipinos, Filipinos so. anyone who's too poor to work elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it, 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 it's completely outrageous that, that all this stuff is going on. And, uh, you know, it, it, if there were any way to stop it, it, it it just seems like a, a, you know, it's a, it's a steamroll. There's nothing. It's all, you know, do we control this country or don't we? No, and I know that there are people. No, we're not. We don't. And th that's the only answer I can come to. I ask myself that question all the time. Are we in charge of this country? And the answer is no. And you know, and how are we going to fix it? Has to be the next question. When the answer is no, we don't control this country. Well, the only thing is, is it's our duty to take it back. Gina, you had a question? I had a question. Happy to be here today. Happy to have you. My daughter is still in Iraq. 